Hey folks, Josephine Sabora here. I decided to continue to review another horror film for the month of October. And this is the most uh, popular and memorable iconic horror film that came out on November 3rd, 1976. And this is the first film adaptation of Stephen King's first novel, simply called Carrie. Story about a young girl named Carrie White, who's very shy, who suddenly got bullied a lot by a bunch of students at her high school. She lives with her mother, who's a religious nut, but we soon discover that she has telekinesis powers. So that way she could use them to go after her tormentors. Yes. And this is the movie that definitely become memorable, as we all know, where we had the scene where she was dumped with a bucket of pig's blood used as a prank when she was chosen as the prom queen, as you can see in the back of this Blu-ray, yeah, right there. And yeah, right here is William Cat. That was going to be uh, <laughs> the prom king. And this is a 40th anniversary edition Blu-ray that's released by Shell Factory, that's part of the Screen Factory label. It's a two-disc Blu-ray set, as you can see. Yeah, I know it's upside down, but it's okay. Yeah, the first disc is the feature film that has a 4K scan of the original negative, even though it's actually the 2000 uh, film transfer. It has a trailer and also has uh, the trailer gallery of all of the Carry franchise, which, yes, there were a lot of... Um, it even follows with uh, the sequel called Rage Carry 2, along with the 2002 TV remake, and, of course, the 2013 theatrical remake. <laughs> Go figure. So it becomes part of it. And also right here we have uh, the second disc that has tons of features, even some new features joining in, you know, some of which were none of the other actors had joined in until now. Yeah, except for John Travolta and all the rest. In fact, it's uh, all right here in the back. This is a very nice set, and I'm so glad I waited this long to pick this up at Best Buy for a good price. It doesn't have a slip cover, but that's okay. I actually love this cover art that they chose, so it's really cool. Um, I, I know in the back uh, you see the original poster, as you can see, a split screen where you see her you know, in a prom dress, and then the other shot, you know, she was drenched in blood. Well, <laughs> anyway. Um, and not only that, though, you got an all-star cast right here. I mean, besides Sissy Spacek playing the role, which was going to be originally played by other actresses right there. Like, I think it was going to be Mary Sue Anderson from uh, Little House on the Prairie, um, so on and so forth. But... They went ahead with her because of her husband, Jack Fisk, who is the art director, and he works on the film, too, and creating all these special effects that they had. You also got Piper Laurie, plays the, the mother of Carrie White. Yeah, Margaret. You got Amy Irving, William Catt. Yes, William Catt from The Greatest American Hero. And went on to do the the horror franchise of the movie House. Uh, he did the the fourth sequel, I believe. But he was in the first movie and definitely the best one. And I actually met the actor by the way when I went to Inclusion Films. Yeah, he's very nice. Yeah, Betty Buckley, who went on to do the film just recently, Splits, that M. Light Shyamalan directed. Yeah, the one with uh, James McAvoy and Anna Taylor-Joy from uh, The Witch. Yeah, There's going to be a sequel to that, which is going to be called Glass. And yes, it's part of the 
Unbreakable franchise now, since we already found out. You also got Nancy Allen, who went on to do some other films by her husband, who's the director, Brian De Palma. Yes, Brian De Palma, who actually directed films like Sisters, Phantom of the Paradise, Scarface, Kalito's Way, even Mission Impossible, all come to mind. Um, you also got John Travolta, yes, and this was his first film after his TV series Welcome Back, Cotter. So I guess in a way, he's sort of like an evil version of Barbarino. <laughs> and then he later became this popular to do films like Saturday Night Fever and Grease, as well as Urban Cowboy. PJ Souls, I know she's been in other stuff too. Edie McClure, yes, Edie McClure went on to do some John Hughes films like Ferris Bueller's Day Off and um, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Many others that she's been doing, like the TV show Small Wonder and The Hogan Family, which is, which is originally called Valerie or Valerie's Family, which Valerie Harper played a role. You know, before she was replaced by Sandy Duncan. Um, Priscilla Pointer, Michael Tepot. What a cast. I love that. So, I mean, this is why this movie is so iconic. No matter what. And this works so well for Halloween. So I guess the idea of this movie was that if you're going for a prom, you have a date with Carrie. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So let's get to the review. Stars Sissy Spacek, once again. Piper Laurie, which, by the way, both of them were nominated for an Academy Award, too. Very rare, too, at the time. Because usually they don't often nominate performances for a horror movie. And this is one of the rarest times they ever did. Yeah, I mean, hey, that's how Science of the Lambs uh, suddenly got the choice when, when both, uh, when both, uh, uh, when both Joey Foster and Anthony Hopkins got nominated, and they won, too. Okay, but well back to that. Uh, Amy Irving, uh, William Katz, Betty Buckley. Nancy Allen, John Travolta, PJ Souls, Sidney Lassick, Stefan Jarash, Priscilla Pointer, Michael Tabat, Sidney Daly, and Dietrich Burfong. Yeah. It's written by Lawrence D. Cohen, which is based on the novel by Stephen King. And it's directed by Brian De Palma. The movie begins when we meet a 16-year-old teenager who is very shy, unpopular, and was totally bullied a lot, named Carrie White, who's played by Sissy Spacek, who at the beginning of the film, we see her along with her classmates, you know, playing volleyball. She suddenly misses it uh, just as soon as the bell rings. Then they went straight to the locker room, you know, taking a shower and getting ready in that particularly racy uh, scene where where most of the girls were undressed I mean they're like fully nude here and there so by the time uh, Carrie was taking a shower she begins to find out that she had her first period and just as soon as she um, opens her hand and filled with blood that's coming directly from her vagina so she was very shocked, and then all of a sudden, the rest of the classmates started to make fun of her, teasing her. All led to um, a very popular, arrogant, and beautiful student named Chris Harrigison, who's played by Nancy Allen. So they go around throwing all these tampons around, you know, telling her to plug it up, plug it up, until uh, Miss Collins who's the coach, you know, played by you know, Betty Buckley, came by to calm her down by slapping her in the face. The light bulb suddenly pops, 
And then she was being taken to the school principal, which he was very uh, uncomfortable. I mean, he keeps calling uh, Carrie Cassie. But then uh, we begin to learn that she actually has telekinesis powers. So she started to control the ashtray, you know, actually screaming to, to the principal that it's Carrie. Not Cassie. <laughs> Afterwards, uh, she was being teased by a little boy in the bike. So she actually does that particular stare. A very frightening stare. And that's where you hear that streaking noise you know, coming from the bar lens. Uh, that's part of the theme. So that, that becomes a sound effect for the uh, telekinesis. So yes, uh, she actually controlled that by flipping the bike and just knock him out that way. <laughs> so then she finally came back home to her mother, Margaret, who's played by Piper Laurie. She's a total religious nut. You know, she keeps on abusing her, you know, telling her to read the the Bible right there about what about all the sinful thoughts and everything but Carrie was just trying to tell her mom about what monstration is because that's what she was getting about but yes um, Margaret actually rants on that and as part of the thought and then suddenly uh, she wants up dragging her into the prayers closet forcing her to pray for forgiveness um, so when she's allowed to return to her room, she suddenly uses her powers and shatters a mirror. Then we meet uh, Carrie's classmate named Sue Snell, who's played by Amy Irving, who felt very guilty about uh, the whole thing that happened at the locker room. Because, yeah, she was part of that. So she actually asked her handsome and very popular boyfriend named Tommy, who's played by William Cat, to actually invite Carrie to a prom in order to make it up for the cruelty that she was going for because she really deserves a better treatment than that. But Carrie was totally reluctant about that, so Miss Collins suddenly uh, convinced her to accept Tommy's invitation. So during Collins' after-school detention, Chris uh, fiercely throws a tantrum and definitely skips her detention for tormenting Carrie. Yeah, they decided to do you know, some exercise and all that just as a punishment. Yeah, I mean, at this point on, Miss Collins uh, totally slaps uh, Chris in the face. She totally deserves that. And she got suspended and decided to leave and not only that, but she also swears at Miss Collins. She left and decided to, and Chris decided to bring up a plan to pull a prank on Carrie uh, with the help of her boyfriend named Billy, who was played by John Travolta. Yeah, Billy was just driving around, drinking some beer. He spotted the guys and driving around. Um, just so they can hang out, but he says, not today. Um, so then a cop pulls over, and he was about to hide the drink so that way he won't get caught. But then Chris calls him, watch it, you little shit. And then Billy just slaps her, saying, I told you not to call me that. <laughs> yeah, and then they started making love, and they hatch a plan to actually pull... A prank on Carrie White by going straight to the slaughterhouse they bring in a sledgehammer to slaughter a pig and that's how they created the pig's blood and they put it inside the buckets so they can set it up on top of the gymnasium so when they go up on stage that's when they're going to pull the huge rope all the way down. And yeah, there's animal cruelty right there too, as you speak. But this is a horror movie, so we're 
are bound for that. So, things were going pretty well uh, as far as it's concerned, where Carrie and Tommy were trying to, uh, you know, trying to uh, connect with each other and trying to figure it out. Because uh, uh, during the middle of the story, Carrie actually read Tommy's poem. A very nice poem, too. I mean, he, he, I mean, he actually got some criticism, even though his teacher suddenly uh, gave some pretty bad criticism. And this is where Tommy says, You suck. <laughs> and the teacher says, What did you say? I said, Oh, shucks. <laughs> or something like that. Um, that was funny. So, I gotta say, even for that uh, moment alone, I mean, this is where they thought this would be a good idea for Tommy to go out with Carrie for, for prom night. And it's really sad, too, because, I mean, they were good together. They really were. They, they started to spark chemistry, considering that Tommy's the boyfriend of Sue, so, you know, to, so that way she could feel better. You know, along with Miss Collins helping her. So prom night begins, you know, everyone's all dressed up. Uh, everything was um, going so so far so good. Everything was becoming beautiful. You know, with a lovely music being played and you know, both of them both Tommy and Carrie are having fun. Yeah, I mean Carrie was a bit nervous, but at times uh, she was she was very delighted, so everything was going great. They decided to pick um, a list of, of both prom, for all the prom kings and prom queens around to join in. And that's when they were, finally went up on stage. After they started going dancing, they even explained, you know, why, why are you doing this? Well, because, well, you read my poem. So as we go on, uh, both um, Tommy and and Carrie are now prom king and prom queen. So they won. They won the contest. Until suddenly, Sue somehow spotted the, the bucket of blood that's all the way on top. That's being ready to be set off by both Chris and Billy. Yeah, she begins to spot at them um, underneath. But then Miss Collins suddenly uh, kicks Sue out. And that's when the bucket of blood drops and went straight down to Carrie. Through her beautiful prom dress that she has, all pink. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, she was totally shocked. And then the Tommy got. Um, yeah, Tommy got furious by saying, what is that? And then the bucket suddenly knocks him unconscious. So then Carrie just couldn't take it anymore. She decided to use her powers by closing all the doors of the gymnasium and decided enough is enough. So she decided to use all the will to actually kill everyone throughout the entire gymnasium setting everything on fire you have coming from these uh, all these uh, electrical uh, lights and you know, speakers and microphones and everything so yes and there's even the the water hose and all of that everything even the the, the scene where Miss Collins uh, was on the corner where suddenly the basketball hoop suddenly falls all the way down, went straight into her body, and she dies. Now, I know originally in the novel, Miss um, Collins actually lives. So I guess I had to do some changes right here. It was such a shame because Miss Collins didn't deserve that. But... Again, they had to go for something different here. So it seemed like the only one who survived through this entire uh, massacre 
was Sue Snelk, and she was the one that got kicked out. And then Carrie got out, the entire gymnasium was on fire, until she suddenly spotted both Chris and Billy just as they were about to leave in their car. And then she almost, they almost ran over Carrie, but then Carrie does that, that frightening stare. The car started to move really fast and it starts to flip around until the car explodes. Uh, also, to keep this in mind, though, I, I love the fact that they use all these split screens because Brian De Palma has been known for doing that with his films in the 70s. Like They always show these split screens to tell the story in a whole different scene. Like It all happens uh, so fast at the same time. I love that. Yeah, I, yeah it seems like it's pretty popular, too, in, in the 60s and 70s with split screens. Uh, between scene after scene. I, I know uh, movies like uh, A Boy Named Charlie Brown started to do that and and yes uh, Phantom of the Paradise did that yeah. <laughs> and I think all these other films had started to do that but it's really cool. Uh, amazing practical effects. Uh, so Carrie suddenly came back home she had to wash up all that blood very sticky and everything until Margaret came back because Margaret uh, was afraid that they were all going to laugh at her. She didn't want to let her go to the prom in the first place. So Margaret suddenly decided, well, let's end it this way by actually stabbing her in the back. And then Carrie just suddenly controls her powers by using all those knives and everything that goes straight into uh, Margaret. So so now, so it almost looks like she's being crucified, uh, just like Jesus Christ. Yeah, with the two knives going straight uh, into the wall, and all these knives, all these utilities going straight into her stomach and everything. So she. So Carrie pulls out a knife, and then it started to rain stones all the way around into the house, and now that's when the house started to crumble all the way down. Yeah. So now they're both dead. They're both gone. Which ends, which suddenly ends at a particular nightmare for Sue Snell, where she begins to find out that Carrie is being buried somewhere inside uh, the house next door um, until she finally founds out an arm started to pull her up trying to bring her all the way down and that's when she woke up screaming I mean that, that was a terrifying nightmare that, that Sue actually had and yes then the movie ends this way oh wow <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know. I, it's a dead giveaway for me, but I had to say everything I had to say just to keep up with this channel and this review. But this was uh, an, a very amazing film that was very well done. I love, um, I love the practical effects that they use. I mean, it, it really shows that even in the 70s, you could do a lot of that. Uh, they, they took all the risks to do so, uh, to put it all together. See, it also proves that you don't need CGI to create those scenes alone, like like what they did with the 2013 remake uh, with Chloe Grace Moretz. Yeah. Uh, the acting was um, amazing. It, it's totally a powerhouse right there. Um, there's not a single bad acting scene whatsoever <laughs> from this particular cast. Um, and... They were all good. They were really good. You definitely feel sorry for Carrie because she didn't really deserve this treatment at all. And that's how we felt too. I mean, every time you see this movie, you do feel sorry for her. I mean, I know she's different from everyone else, but she shouldn't be treated like like dirt. So to me, she's, she's an underdog. And, I, you know, she's so beautiful. 
I just wish they they treat her with respect. But at least she finally gets her vengeance a after all these tormentors who did it who did this to her because now they know why the tormentors are afraid of her. So there we go. That's what makes it so scary. Uh, but the performance-wise, uh, Sissy Spacek and Piper Laurie definitely brings out their best performance in them. I do wish they had one in the Cambi Award, but another example why we don't agree with the, the Oscars these days. Um, but I also love the cast uh, joining in. I mean, it was interesting to see John Travolta playing an asshole, even though this was his first film before he became very likable in other films but very interesting uh, along with Nancy Allen so yeah she played a, a total bitch in the movie um, but it was nice to see other actors uh, joining in like uh, PJ Souls you know she was wearing that that famous hat of hers and she, uh, we also heard that she even wears that hat sometimes so that's cool uh, She's even beautiful with it. So she's more of a, um, a tomboyish uh, character. So Edie McClure, which she doesn't speak much in the movie, but it's, it's really interesting to see her, even though she's, she's a bit of a nerdy type. Uh, she had those uh, black thick glasses of hers. Um, but she's also good. And of course, uh, William Katz, a very charming, uh, uh, very, he's also funny at times too, but he's very charming, and I feel like you know having him together with Carrie really works. You know, to me, I think this this would have started a relationship, but but the whole point of this was just to make her feel better, because so, because Tommy is of course um, is Sue's uh, boyfriend. And also, Amy Irving was very good as Sue, and it was great that uh, even though you know she she made a big mistake, you know she started to change, trying to help her with Tommy joining in. So now everything turns out uh, the hoping things will turn out for the better. But now you know how she feels too. Also to note, um, the cast additions uh, for the part of the film, interesting enough. Some of the actors uh, were chosen as part of uh, the cast additions for another movie, as you all know, Star Wars. Because uh, we also learned that, yes, William Cabb was going to be chosen to play Luke Skywalker. And uh, which he was going to join in with Kurt Russell. That would have been awesome, too, if, if both uh, William Cabb and Kurt Russell had played uh, Luke Skywalker and Han Solo. That would have been amazing. And I think they were going to get um, Amy Irving as um, as Princess Leia. That would have been interesting too. Yeah, I would have loved to see that. So that was part of that. And mostly because while they were filming the movie, uh, Brian De Palma's uh, best friend, George Lucas, came on set. So they're trying to see how this is all going out. Yeah. Wow. Amazing story right there. There are comedic moments uh, in the movie, such as the scene where Tommy uh, went with the guys to find the perfect suit for the prom. And suddenly they speed up their voices, you know, trying to keep up uh, what they're trying to decide and they then you hear like a, a 70s disco tune being played at the background I thought that was pretty hilarious uh, then there's also another moment uh, where uh, Margaret uh, Carrie's mother suddenly uh, comments um, Carrie's uh, pink prom dress that she created and she actually uh, says dirty pillows and then Carrie just says to her, These are breasts. Every girl has them. <laughs> yeah. And, and then she and then Margaret just goes around, you know, trying to hurt herself. She keeps smacking her around like that. 
I mean, now, now you know how crazy Margaret really is in, in, in the movie. And then she even the yells at Carrie, They're all going to laugh at you! Which also got repeated uh, when she got dumped with a bucket of blood, pig's blood. And she was all shocked, and, she, and that's where she hears the comment from her mom. They're all going to laugh at you! They're all going to laugh at you! They're all going to laugh at you! That's her way. Uh, wow. <laughs> uh, but getting back to the, um, the history behind uh, this adaptation, um, Stephen King really did a lot of work on this. Um, this was at the time when he was, he was working as a janitor uh, at a local high school where he actually discovered uh, two girls. I mean, one, uh, there was a girl I think got teased a lot, just like Carrie does. But then another one, there was another girl, also lives with, with uh, her religious mother. You know, they were both dead. And that's how uh, Carrie White was born you know, through the typewriter. So, he had to work so hard to come up with the story, but unfortunately, uh, he was totally frustrated that he just thought this wasn't going to work out, so he had to dump his entire script into a wastebasket. Well, that is until Stephen King's wife, uh, Tapafa, uh, suddenly takes uh, the wastebasket, you know, just getting ready to throw it in the trash, and, and took the, his script that was unfinished, uh, she read it and and decided to talk to uh, Steve that I love your story, uh, please write some more. So he continues and and after that, uh, once it's finished, they finally sold millions of copies through tons of bookstores around, including Las Vegas, which eventually was banned at Las Vegas schools around because of the way it was portrayed, so they weren't allowed to read this book, I guess for a religious reason. But Stephen King was very happy that he spotted uh, the book, his book, at a local uh, Las Vegas uh, bookstore, so it was doing pretty well. And that was enough for them to do a film adaptation by producer Paul Menashe, who was uh, head of 20th Century Fox at the time, but the studio couldn't pick this up, and in fact, no other studio could pick it up until United Artists uh, decided to take the chance, because they had a female executive to join in, the first female executive, and she loved the idea to turn this into a film adaptation, and there we go. Uh, with the script of Lawrence D. Cohen, so he wrote the screenplay that's based on Stephen King's novel, and that's how it worked. And by the way, Stephen King actually loved the film too. He really loves the film adaptation that we didn't expect it. And that's why the film became very popular and totally iconic. Really relates to to high school around, you know, with and of course proms and everything. <laughs> and this was a hit, though. By the way, its budget was 1.8 million dollars and only made 33.8 million in the US so it was um, it was a big hit uh, for United Artists and definitely a big hit for the movie itself because this was the perfect horror film for every young teenager out there and everyone else even adults would enjoy it's very scary wow it has it all <laughs> it has an amazing score by Pino the Nagio and uh, beautiful cinematography by Mario Tossi. So they join in to create one scary horror adaptation from Stephen King. So there you go. <laughs> and yes, um, as far as this movie is concerned, it's way better than all the followers that came by. Well, I love. I did enjoy the 2002. Um, TV adaptation with uh, Angela Labatus, you know, from the movie uh, May. Yeah, she's a very underrated actress, so she's very good. And of course, we had the sequel, 
The Rage Carry 2 that came out in 1999, uh, also from the same studio, United Artists. Basically, a cash grab, which has to have, uh, which has Emily Burjo, Jason London, and of course, Zachary Ty Bryan from Home Improvements. <laughs> we all know how that turned out. And yes, on top of that, they even brought back uh, Amy Irving reprising her role as Sue Snell, since she's the only survivor. And the main reason why they made that sequel, just so they can kill her off. That's all they did. I'm sorry I had to spoil that, but that's how fucked up that film was. So, yeah. Uh, the special effects, um, again, very uh, amazing. Definitely put a lot of hard effort to do so with Jack Fiss uh, as the art director, and they work together with other um, other special effects guys. Actually, building a set of the house that they had to uh, destroy by actually adding all these uh, rocks and stones just to set that scene off, or even uh, doing all these uh, uh, pyrotechnics to to create the fire and all the explosions and all of that that's happening in the gymnasium and this was all set um, in Southern California at a local high school and all the other settings that they got all together so there you go <laughs> but still um, it's the perfect uh, horror film to watch You'll never forget. So anyway, I give Carrie, the 1976 original, five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.